2018 planning board meeting. Uh, and uh, first, oh, first, oh, I thought it was going to be approval of the minutes from the last meeting, but it's election of chair and vice chair. First item on the agenda. Yes, I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What's his name? <laughs> Planning, planning board humor. Vice chair. It is. It is. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> I am totally Who was at the meeting? <laughs> Can we start again? No. <laughs> Go ahead, Peter. Victoria was going to do you, and I was going to do Joe. <laughs> that was Doesn't matter. Whichever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would like to make a nomination for chair. And I would like it to be Carol Ann Jordan. Okay. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Any mutiny in, in going? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? <laughs> I abstain. All right. Next, uh, Vice Chair. Yeah, I would like to uh, nominate Joe Challot as Vice Chair. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstaining? <laughs> all right. That was difficult. Okay. <laughs> Approval of minutes from the December 19, 2017 meeting. Any errors or omissions? I'll move that we approve those minutes. All right, Dad, second. Right Jim seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. It's unanimous. Okay. First item on the agenda, the consent agenda. Maxwell Woods, Joel Fitzpatrick, doing business as Maxwell Woods LLC is requesting a 90-day extension of the final subdivision resource protection permit and site plan approval granted. October 17, 2017, for Maxwell Woods, a development located at 112 through 114 Spurwick Avenue, which includes 38 condominiums and eight apartments in two buildings, section 16-2-6, subdivision ordinance post-approval requirements, section 19-8-3, resource protection regulations, and section 19-9, site plan regulations. Do we have any? The, the applicant asked if he needed a representative, and I advised him no. So if you want someone here, I'll, I'll own that. Okay. Yeah, Morgan, the purpose of the extension is just getting the plan signed and filed? Yeah, they had several conditions on their approval, and they are, okay. I know they are working diligently to meet those requirements, but they're not ready yet. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead. No, I'd like to make a motion. All right. A uh, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the request submitted by the applicant, and under section 16-2-6 of the subdivision ordinance, the request of Joel Fitzpatrick doing business as Maxwell Woods LLC for a 90-day extension of the approval for final subdivision review, a resource protection permit, and site plan review of the Maxwell Woods development, which includes 38 condominiums, eight apartments in two buildings, located at 112 through 114 Sperling Avenue, and amendments to the Spurring Woods subdivision related to the road extension, Greenbelt Trail, and condominium lighting be approved. That is it. Jim Seconds. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Balin Morris Resource Protection Permit. Colonel Balin and Patricia, go ahead. This may be out of order, but I understand that item five is also a tabling motion, and there are two people in the audience here for that item. I didn't know if the planning board wanted to consider taking it out of order. It's fine with me. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. um, do you, do we, do we, number five, taking that now? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what she's suggesting. Um, the, the only problem that I would have is that technically it's on for the agenda at 740 and it has had some interest in it so I just I, I would hate to see if people who 
we're waiting till 7:40 or closer to get here. To, to I know there's going to be limited comment because it is something tabled. Um, I might might miss that, so I don't want to seem like we're moving up in the agenda. But that that's the only thing that I have. If you guys, if other members of the board uh, disapprove of that, then that's fine. But I, I just that's my only thing because it did have a lot of interest from the public the last time we were here. Go ahead, Peter. Well, I, I would, I take John's point, but for those who are now here, this would at least let them go home. The people who do show up on time are simply going to be faced with a motion to table, which it's not costing them anything, and we're freeing up another few people if we let them go now. So I would, I would be in favor of moving it up on the agenda. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with Pete. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. Both good arguments. Good. Okay. I'm okay with it. So, board of Do you have to recuse yourself? I do. I have to go away. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. I'm not even going to move for this one. Um, next item on the agenda is 19 Wells Road Telecommunication Tower. Global Signals Acquisitions 4 LLC Crown Castle is requesting site plan review, a resource protection permit, and shoreland zoning review to construct a 180 foot tall telecommunications tower to be constructed at 19 Wells Road, R5 30, Section 19 9 Site Plan, Section 19 8 3 Resource Protection Permit, and Section 19 8 2 shore land zoning performance standards and the applicant has made a request to table the meeting until the uh, February 26th meeting is there any discussion would anyone like to make a motion Pete <coughs> A uh, motion for the board to consider, be it order that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Global Acquisitions Roman 4 LLC for site plan review, a resource protection permit, and shoreland zoning review to construct a 180 foot tall communications tower to be located at 19 Wells Road be tabled to the February 26, uh, 2018 meeting of the planning board. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion of the motion? Do we know the reason that it's not ready yet, I assume? They, they had major changes they wanted to make to the plan, and they need more time. Okay. And just for the record, I didn't realize that we were moving it up because there was a motion at table. I didn't hear that part of the discussion. I thought we were moving up to discuss it. So obviously I have no problem with us talking about now just if it's requested to have it tabled. It's okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, Bob. Okay. Balen Morris Resource Protection Permit, Ronald Balin and Patricia Morris are requesting an after-the-fact resource protection permit to alter 1,557 square feet of RP2 wetland for drainage and lawn area located at 26 Hannaford Cove Road, Section 19-8-3 Resource Protection Permit. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. I'm Bob Metcalf of Mitchell & Associates and representing Ron and batting for this application. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Bob. Oh, shall I move it? Is that better? It is. Are we on the air? Yeah. My, my okay. is yours now. Okay. No, but thanks. That's good I may. The mics seem to be pointed down okay. closer to the... All right. You're better. I think we're up. Um, the last time we were before the board, we had gone through revised plans based on the submission after the site walk. Uh, we had submitted the plans later than the normal time because the plans would have had been submitted the Friday before we had the site walk. And as I indicated the last time, we decided it wasn't prudent to 
submit the plans before we had the site walk to figure if there were other issues the planning board members had. So the plans you had at the last meeting you saw are, and the ones you presently have in your packet are the plans that we had submitted to address all of the uh, comments from Mr. Harding and several of Maureen's comments and several of the comments the board had. So we have not revised anything <coughs> since then. Uh, I don't know if you want me to walk through the plan set again with the changes we made the last time that I discussed or what's your preference? Yeah. Okay. These are just the, the shots I'm showing up on the wall are just some of the shots of the backyard showing where the hot tub is, the location of where the... So this is the, the hot tub on the concrete pad. That's the failed pipe section showing. Uh, this is a shot looking from the back end of the direction of flow down through the yard. This is underneath the, uh, the deck area. And this just gives another perspective looking from the downstream end of the, uh, the yard, looking back up towards uh, the alignment of where the existing drain line falls. Uh, what I did uh, in that packet uh, is to take the plan and provide a little more delineation because the line weight and the colors really weren't reading very well. So we highlighted what is the RP2 wetland delineation along the side and then down along this side. Everything within the, the fenced-in area of the yard was actually GPS located by Albert Frick, uh, who had done the original wetlands delineation on this for the, actually the property owner prior to the individuals who built the home uh, that was acquired. Uh, the area that's hatched in in this location is the 1,557 square feet of wetland impacted area, that's the fill area. The other portion where the actual under drain occurs is still in, well, it's a mowed area. Uh, when Albert Frick group went back out there to redelineate the wetland area, the vegetation, even though it's grass and there is some wetland vegetation along the, the outer perimeter, you saw beyond the mowed edge, it still meets the RP2 definition of a wetland condition as far as the soils and even the vegetation classification. So the impact that we're talking about for replacing the under drain really falls within what is still classified as RP2, but within the wetland. Uh, the last uh, submission, or our original submission, was just to replace the four inch line that had failed. Uh, Mr. Harding's comments were that it would probably make more sense to go with a larger pipe, which we did agree with. Uh, so we changed that from the four inch to an eight inch. Uh, and on the upstream end, we want to putting in a, uh, a, tr a uh, screen, uh, basically, is to keep large debris from coming down through there as well as it's, a, it's an animal rodent trap, if you will, to keep any activity from going down through that. We are rebuilding the head wall uh, with riprap uh, at the end of the pipe, and then we have an outfall on this lower end here. We will do some cleaning of the sediment that's built up down there and also have a head wall and a riprap. Uh, uh, apron on the uh, downstream end of the uh, the pipe. Uh, these were all comments that were part of Mr. Harding's review. Uh, it's basically, this is the the existing conditions of the proposed don't look very much different. It still shows the alignment of the pipe coming through. Uh, we had identified in our submission an area where we would wind up having to do a little more disturbance in this area where there's some existing moss. Uh, and it's only by the nature of the way the moss is, which is classified as a wetland an RP2 condition, that we're peeling that back. We've added notes to the plan to document how that's to occur, which was one of the requests of Mr. Harding. Uh, the other temporary impact is basically the excavation required to remove and uh, trench for the new line, and that layer will be uh, stabilized and basically return back to uh, the same adjacent conditions. <coughs> And the last time we were here, I mean, on the site walk, uh, the board had asked a couple of questions regarding there were some stone, stepping stones that came from the patio leading across where this under drain is and going to the upland edge. 
Uh, we had taken those off the plan at the request of the planning board. Um, and one of the other comments that was raised is one was the, the deck existing on the house. We had submitted a, a letter that the, uh, Patty had put together that the deck was on the house when they acquired it. Uh, the other question was regarding the fence that goes around the, uh, the property and various between chain link and ornamental fence that's up here and basically an animal fence, if you will, a wire fence that goes across the back. That was all in place when they purchased the home and that's in that written documentation we provided. And then the question regarding the hot tub, when they put that in, they had spoken with the code officer at the time and was told they did not need a permit to put the hot tub in and it was over where the existing concrete paver patio was located and that's where they installed the, uh, the hot tub. So, and at the last meeting, the board had asked several questions in terms of one, relocating the hot tub and relocating the dog run. And at the last time we did discuss the fact that there really is no alternative place to put the hot tub. Uh, it was discussed about putting it in the front yard and that's where the leach field is. So you can't do that. Plus basically putting your hot tub out in your front yard doesn't really give you a lot of privacy. Uh, so the preference as uh, they stated the last time and we're reinforcing is that we prefer not to remove the hot tub. Uh, then the other was to relocate the dog run. And while that's a, a freestanding element, uh, as you'll probably remember when we walked the property, that backyard is pretty steep. You know, there really isn't a flat area other than where it occurs. So we have looked at an option that if it I don't mind, I'll pass you up a sketch of what we put together. So the sketch you have before you, uh, it shows where the existing dog run is and one of the things we've looked at is to try and minimize some of the hardscape that's in there and to pull the dog run out of where it just barely encroaches onto what is still classified as RP2 even though it's the lawn area, it is to remove a three foot strip of the existing concrete patio and shifting the dog run closer to where the hot tub is. And then there's a strip of concrete pavers that are in front of the hot tub and extending down towards the, uh, the dog run, taking that strip off so it aligns with the front of the hot tub. And then where I've added in one of the stairs or the steps to get up to allow you to get access into the hot tub, there's an arrow band in there, the width of what the two steps or treads would be about two feet, removing that section of pavers and basically restoring it to a, a grassed area. That would reduce the amount of impervious surface to fit by 58 square feet, so roughly an area seven by seven. Uh, so that's an option uh, that we can look at minimizing the amount of impact that's on there. All that area that we're talking about removing the pavers on is area that is considered a filled portion of that 1,557 square feet. Uh, so this was the one logical opportunity to relocate the dog run if we could. Uh, any place else short of putting it up in the front yard, uh, which if anybody you know, you own dogs, if you put them up in the front yard and people are driving by or walking by, some dogs will start barking and you wind up creating neighbors who are probably unhappy if you have your dog and the dog run out front. So really the, the backyard is the, the most logical place for it and by doing that shift it does, as I said, free up some of the hardscape area. Looking around. I have a question. Go ahead. What about the um, uh, Conservation Commission's recommendation? Well, when I looked at that, when they talked about 30 feet, we're not even that far off the, the building with impact. The furthest point from the house to the where the, uh, the under drain gets replaced is probably about 18 feet. From the corner yeah. over to the left hand there? Yeah, basically, the greatest distance from there to there, 
It's just about 18 feet. So what you're saying? What about going laterally, though? Going lateral? Yeah, that's what I took that to mean. Is well, I took it as this direction. As we discussed the last time, you know, the first time we talked about this, this slope, which is filled, to remove that material and try and restore that to a wetland condition, it's not really going to work. Okay. Um, Maureen, you want to clarify the Conservation Commission's? Sure. Um, I met with the Conservation Commission last Wednesday evening and um, actually was just finishing the draft minutes today. What the minutes said was that they were frustrated that um, there had been an illegal fill of RP2 wetland and also that this particular property owner had not been the one that had done the fill um, and they struggled with it. Uh, there was a discussion about uh, granting a permit and imposing a fine, the money which would be set aside for other wetland work in town that did not get support. There was discussion about just letting them have the permit as is. That motion failed by a vote of two to four, and then they worked on it some more, and what they came up with was a recommendation that some of the fills should be removed. And the way to describe it was to come up with this, anything within to, to allow the pipe to go in, and that anything that was more than 30 feet away from the foundation which basically, if we're looking at the plan behind us, is everything to the left. So they base they were this? saying, yeah. So they were saying anything thirty more than thirty feet away from the foundation, the fill of so, the RP two in that area. So basically, you're looking at somewhere up in that corner. Yeah, well, you take a radius, I would imagine, off the corner right. of thirty and, feet. And the thirty came from a way to describe what their intent was. So their intent was to live with the fill behind the house and around the edges of the house, but further away to ask for some of the fill to be removed and to have it be restored to wetland and planted with native plants. My initial impression, that's like you said, still just a small amount. I'm not sure what the point would be in how is it going to make it any better. I guess, man, I don't. I don't agree with it. To be perfectly honest, when we discussed when we discussed this before, trying to do wetland restoration on that side, the way the slope is on there, the amount of excavation that would have to be taken out of there in order to try and get down to a level where there's a hydrology that's going to support the wetland conditions, is going to be rather diffi rather difficult, and the success rate is probably going to be slim. To me, just uh, to comment on that, I mean, I understand what the Conservation Committee uh, was saying, and uh, I'm actually kind of, uh, makes me feel a little bit better that they were struggling with this too, just like we have, because the, the I think the problem that we have here that when we're looking at this property is not with the owners right now, uh, it's with the previous owner that definitely did something that he should not have done. Um, and, uh, and I take the applicant at their word with regards to when they bought the house and they're here now doing the right thing. Um, and I, I just don't, I don't, I, I'm with Jim, I don't think a, this 30 foot, uh, I know, I understand the Conservation Committee's intent on that and I, I think it's admirable, but at the same time, I think realistic wise, it's not gonna make that much of a difference um, with that. I mean, we were out there at that property and I just think from the house 30 feet, it, it's not even gonna be a significant amount and uh, the sort of the uh, taking away that fill is going to be more effort than it's worth and um, so I, I would not be inclined to adopt the Conservation Committee's recommendation. Go ahead. Well, I did a quick sketch here. I don't know if you want to look at it and make sure. This is how I would interpret what they are requesting. Yeah. But I, I agree with you. I don't really see the feasibility of doing that. In, a, in any kind of workable way. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Okay. Jim, you were. Yeah. Here. All right. What about? Um, go ahead. Uh, it's a question for Bob. Uh, I'm trying to interpret your your handout. Uh, you're talking about moving the dog run a slight distance towards the hot tub. Correct. And then 
you're talking about putting in a different type of paver? Uh, no, basically that is a mobile or freestanding structure. And then the material, and I forget what you had underneath. But what do you have oh, on those? They're vinyl, whatever. They're like pads or what have you. And basically what we do is remove the three foot swath of pavers. It's three by 11, something like that. They would actually take the pavers out, adjust the grade, and slide the whole dog run right. towards the, the patio. And then that other strip that's along the side parallel with the uh, the front of the hot tub, remove those pavers. But you're talking about replacing it with a uh, stormwater brick paver, is that an impermeable? A that's permeable? a potential opportunity to do that in the future. Uh, uh, that's not part of what you're yeah. suggesting now? No, it's just, I want to say that that would be a potential to replace those with a, a porous paver in the future. And what's happening on the crosshatch uh, section in the dog run and along the edge by the hot tub there? Basically that's just ref showing where there's existing pavers that would come out. So ah. what's what's shown in red are pavers that would be physically removed and that area would be just grassed over. And then of course the dog run, as we're saying, be slid three feet closer towards the hot tub and then you know, restore the area underneath that okay, so we can the, ignore that note about replace existing concrete pavers with stormwater concrete brick paper. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what had me confused. <clears throat> I forgot to address that as a possibility. If they wanted to replace the pavers, they could do that to do that with a porous paver. Go ahead, uh, just one last con uh, question on the Conservation Commission. Did they actually go visit the site, or did they make this recommendation based on the drawings? They made it based on the plans. They could yeah. not visit the site. I, about I guess this concept plan and what's, uh, doesn't seem like a lot of work for not much or any benefit to me. As I said, you know, when the board asked us to look at what opportunities there were, and this was the, the closest thing we could come to. Sliding the dog run any further would put it in front of the door that comes out onto the patio. So yeah. I, I, I don't. I can't say I don't like it. It's, it's, I'm trying to get the right words. It's, it doesn't seem to be any point to it, to me. I, just, Go ahead, John. Just on Jim's point, I, I kind of agree. I don't think it's necessary. I like that the applicant's thinking about what they can do to sort of rectify the situation that they inherited. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's uh, that necessary. Okay. I see nodding over here. <laughs> um, I, I, part of me agrees the, the necess uh, necessity of it. I appreciate the effort, and I think it would be a good thing to do. So. Victoria, you look yeah, like I, you want to say something. You. Yeah, I, I would have to say I, I agree with you, but I think um, I don't have the votes. That's why. That was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see the need to do that. No. Okay. Any other questions for Bob? I'm going to say, does anyone from the audience want to comment on this? But the, uh, the only people here are the homeowners, and they have someone speaking already. So, um, all right. Anything else? What do we Go motion, for it. yeah, motion for board to consider findings of fact. Um, Ronald Baylin, uh, number one, Ronald Baylin and Patricia Morris are requesting an after the fact resource protection permit for 1,155, uh, 1,557 square feet of fill, fill in an RP2 wetland for landscaping and an additional 315 square feet. Uh, feet of temporary alteration to replace drainage pipe located at 26 Hannaford Cove Road, which requires a resource protection permit under section 19 8 3. Number two, the proposed permit, uh, excuse me, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not materially obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. Three, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not impound surface waters or reduce the absorbs, uh, absorptive capacity of the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties 
for the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, uh, sedimentation, or otherwise. Five, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Six, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not pose problems to, uh, related to the support of structures. Seven, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity or quality of groundwater. Eight, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will not disturb coastal dunes or con continuous uh, back dune areas. Number nine, the proposed pipe replacement and fill will maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. Number 10, the pipe replacement and fill will maintain an adequate buffer area between the wetland and adjacent land use uses. Number 11, the pipe replacement and fill will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of the Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and Sediment Control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or subsequent revisions thereof. Number 12, the pipe replacement and fill will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings and from construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15-1-4 of the sewage ordinance. Um, and 13, the proposed pipe replacement and fill is not located in a floodplain. 14, the application uh, substantially complies with section 19-8-3 of the resource protection regulations. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Ronald Malin and Patricia Morris for an after the fact resource protection permit of, uh, excuse me, for 1,557 square feet of fill and an RP2 wetland and uh, for just landscaping and an additional 275 square feet of temporary alteration to replace drainage pipe located at 26 Hannaford Cove Road be, ta uh, be allowed. Or no, are we tabling this? Be approved. Yeah, be approved subject. to the regular, uh, be approved. Subject, Sub to, subject to, the con uh, to these conditions. Number one, that the plans be revised to address the town, town engineer's comments dated January 8th, 2018. Number two, that a note be added to the plan that erosion control be accomplished in compliance with the Environmental Quality Handbook of Erosion and Sediment con uh, Control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or subsequent revisions. And three, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans be revi have been revised to address the above conditions and submitted to the town planner. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Jenna. All right. Go ahead. Um, the person who drafted this clearly wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Had she been on? I thought page? I got the wrong one. <laughs> Two hundred and seventy-five square feet, I think, needs to be updated to three hundred and fifteen. Oh, under the. Under all right. The, so, um, can I make my own friendly amendment? <laughs> okay. So, uh, with with regards to be it ordered, the. Uh, um, uh, I would change the additional 275 square feet to an additional 315 square feet. You okay with that, Joe? Yes. Anything else? Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Abstaining? All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Schedule. All right. <laughs> Any public comment not on the agenda? Uh, seeing no one, what's my next motion? Move we'll adjourned. All right. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Wow. It was the last and it's 734. What a rule, right? Yes. That's great.